Okay, welcome. It is Wednesday, January 17th in the evening. Joining us today is uh, someone I met on a summer retreat, a CE5 retreat in Wisconsin this past summer. And, and we shared a few experiences. One I talked a little bit about, which was the physical mediumship one. Yes. And she she had an interesting experience in that alongside of me, and actually. I'm, and I'm still, I'm still trying to process, right? No, no, no. I'm still healed. Still. Oh, good. Yeah. So that was effective. So she had multiple things. Many people had multiple things happen during that. So one of the things that happened is, is the, you know, I got apported this, this uh, prism supposedly from uh, Ashtar uh, and we got other gems apported. And then we had some uh, other experiences with channeling of, uh, ascended masters and things that had interesting, surprising, <laughs> offsetting, off-putting comments here and there. Yeah. So, so th that was part of our experience, but in that I learned that she has this expertise and I, it fits well, I think as a, um, offshoot or blend or a, um, uh, practical use of remote viewing. So that's why I've invited here, her here. Uh, to uh, help raise awareness and give us ideas and that kind of thing. So I'm going to turn it over to Wendy. So uh, have at it. And by the way, she, in case we didn't want to forget, she does have a lot of videos out there that she'll mention, we'll mention on it on YouTube. And she has a Facebook page and stuff to, that you can get to her. So we'll make sure we mention at the end too. So if you're intrigued by some of this, by all means, if you haven't, you can, you can go to her her uh, the YouTube look her up and see some amazing things. So Wendy, welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Yes. Right. It was so if nice you could people. just kind of start. <laughs> it was so nice with... to see you on that retreat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was that was crazy, right? <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> anyway, um I'll I'll go into how I got into this. Um it is um kind of unusual. I had no idea about any of this, first of all. I was a sailor my whole life. I sailed and I raced um, since I was 17, all through the Great Lakes. And uh, my husband and I cruised all down through the Caribbean and, and all South America and stuff for years and years and years. Had no idea. I was intrigued by the stars, loved the stars, would lay there and look at them for hours. But none of this ever, ever, you know, clicked with me. And so then um, on Belize, in Belize, my husband got sick. We came home here to Ontario and he ended up, he passed away. So you can imagine, I was married to him for a very, very long time. We had an amazing life and all of a sudden he was gone. I went into complete shock, complete, utter shock. So um, during that time, I have to tell you, I started seeing craft never experienced that before in my life started seeing craft started seeing beings started seeing all this stuff and um during that time i met a friend a fellow a, a mutual friend his name's rob freeman who um became good friends he was helping me when my husband was sick we became good friends and he um contacted me one day and he said this other friend of mine Leonie Appelt, Appelt um, she just sent me a video of her kids running around with blindfold on and he said he said I asked her is this real and she said yes it is and he said well if they can do it I want to know how <laughs> I want to do it is what he said so he contacted me and so that became became our journey so the first thing we did is we went and we took a course in Ottawa to learn how to do this. And when we walked in, the teacher looked at me and she said, you'll never be able to do this. And I just kind of looked at her and she said, well, it's because you've been all had all this trauma. So of course I didn't. The whole weekend, I didn't. My first thought was, well, you took my money. But anyway, I actually didn't. I saw... I helped other people. I saw one girl, she was from 
Um, she was from South America and she's Spanish and I helped her. She opened right up. She was seeing my fingers. She was reading. She was doing all of this stuff. And, um, and we actually, I taught a little boy who was, it was fascinating teaching him. He saw, but um, while I was teaching him, this other lady was with, with me and we were teaching him and we were, had the mask on him and he, we said, can you see this color cheat? And he says, yes. And he told me the color. And I said to him, where are you seeing it? And he pointed at his arm. And I'm like, what? You know? And so then we started, oh, you have to bring it up here. You know, like <laughs> this was us being, we didn't know what we were doing. The teacher came and she said, no, children can see from anywhere. So that was intriguing. I went, we went back to the, the B and B we were staying at and I was sitting there and Rob and this other person was over practicing and I'm sitting there and I had my mask on and I'm sitting there rocking in the chair and the other fellow, Mark, as I'm rocking, I'm listening to them. He came over and he put a sheet of paper on my lap and says, what color is that? Boom. It was right there. Hot pink. And that's when I saw, I saw, I saw at the B and B, I didn't see at the training course. So we came home from that and we started practicing almost every day. We had no idea what we were doing, but we just started practicing with the basics, you know? And so as time went on, we slowly, we slowly started getting better and better, not even understanding what we were doing at that point because nobody really explained it to us. And so, but also as time went on, I was actually starting to experience more and started, um, well, experiencing more basically, yeah. And um, so then we decided, as we were practicing, we decided we needed to know more. So we, we researched and we found a fellow named Mark Kamizarov, who is from Russia and who teaches this. Um, and um, he sent his person over and we had a week long course with her. And while we were doing that, I started seeing colors. Um, we have videos of this. All of us were seeing colors, even with the sheets behind our head. Everybody was doing that. And there's a video on that. Um, what happened to me is um, I became good friends with Michaela who was doing the training and she came up and sat with me um, in my room and we were chatting and stuff and she said put the mask on and then she started talking to my husband about my husband which I became very emotional and while she was doing that all of a sudden I saw everything in the room I saw the desk I saw the lamp I saw the window with the mask on and I'm like and then I went emotion brings this on is what I kind of first thing I thought emotion brings us on so then we went um, after that course, we went home and of course, what do you do with it then? So we just continued starting to practice. We wanted to read, we wanted to read a book. So we were practicing um, back and forth. We were driving back and forth. He's an hour away from me and he was just totally motivated also. So one of the few things that happened while we were practicing is um, we were seeing the colors. Um, you can see this on the video. I um, I could tell where the cup was in the room or one of them I found mesmerizing. Rob built a pyramid with a, with a cup in the center and I had to find that blindfolded, which I could find it and I was grab it, but I couldn't get the depth perception right. I couldn't, I, 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 I the whole video shows me trying to find that one cup. And I think I finally did it at the end, trying to get the distance right with the mask on. And so another thing that happened is um, Rob went into the other room and he was kind of wanting me to try to remote view. So as he walked into the room, like I'm sitting in my living room with the mask on, he walks away and I had the exact feeling of my consciousness leaving and going into that room with him. Like I, I felt it, I saw it. And I went to him and I went, I, I just went into the room. I just went into that other room. And he says, well, if you're in here, tell me what I'm holding. Tell me the color I'm holding. So 
he starts showing colors and stuff and I was getting them while I was in the room. That was my first experience of that. So then as we kept practicing, one day he jumped in the car, didn't tell me, I'm still in the living room. He didn't tell me he left the room and he was in his car and he starts, how did I, he said, I'm, I'm not going to tell you where I am. And he has the radio. He has a VHF radio. And he's, so he starts talking to me on it. And unbeknownst to me, he was backing out my driveway. And he says, I have a cup on my dashboard of my car. Tell me what color that cup is. And I got it. And I was sitting with my back to the window. And he was driving up the driveway. And then he started driving down the road and asked me what the cup, color of the cup was. And so I told him again what the cup was. No idea where he was, not knowing he was driving down the road. So as we were going along, we realized that, I realized that it was consciousness. We were seeing with consciousness. And we were, and, and we began to realize that we could send, we had to direct it. We could send our consciousness almost absolutely anywhere. So we kept practicing and we kept practicing and Rob was seeing like one of the things we did is on my coffee table, I made him lunch and I told him he couldn't have the lunch until he found it on my coffee table. <laughs> and there's videos of that too, because he loved brownies. So I put a brownie on a white piece of paper and I told him he couldn't have it until he found it with the mask. On. There's a video on there of him actually finding his lunch on my coffee table yeah and it and it was really funny because um i won't i'll let you guys watch it but he went to go he went to go for it then stopped second thought and i'm like sitting there and i'm like okay he just put his hand down toward it. i'm thinking he just put his hand down towards it and and then the last minute he said he he saw it but he wasn't sure so we stopped and then he reached out and there it was and he got his lunch so anyway, like I say, we kept practicing and then um, COVID came along. So of course we couldn't travel to each other's place. So we made arrangements to take a course with Nikolai Denisov and Marina from Russia. And we took a month long course with them online every day except weekends and this was without a mask. This was just closed eyes. Uh, Nikolai said the mask was only to prove it to people. This was just with your eyes closed. And um, we took a month long course every day and he was teaching us to see um, these different shapes. And the reason he said he wanted us to learn this is because those shapes are the basics of letters. And so eventually, if you, you're, and it's all a training, and eventually your mind will accept those shapes, and then you can go on and start reading, is what the premise was. And so by the end of that course, I was reading, but also what blew my mind as I started seeing the room, just I was, like I would get flashes of my whole, my whole kitchen while I was practicing, just sudden, like I'd be practicing with him and then all of a sudden, boom, there was, there was my whole room, my whole kitchen. And I was like freaking out and I'm, and, and Nikolai, he was pumped. He was like, yes, you know, yes. <laughs> and so, but it didn't stay. It was like just a flash of that. And I forgot this part. Um, the first course I took in Ottawa, I was sitting at the table with all these people and I said, why is the blind not learning this? Why is no one teaching this to the blind? Nobody could give me that answer. So as Rob and I carried on um, learning all the stuff that we did learn, um, we, we just decided that um, we wanted the world to know. And we also decided we wanted to treat and train the blind. So we actually both opened up our own channels and um, to get it out there because everyone else is hiding it and everyone else is charging a fortune. Um, we are training for free. Mostly we're, we're, we're training people that have eye issues. Right now I'm training a fellow that has um, detached retinas in both eyes. When he contacted me, he didn't know if he was ever going to see again. 
So I'm training him. He's doing amazing. Just a young fellow. And then your friend. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to train her. She contacted me. She, and um, yeah. So, um, and Rob's doing two. One lady, one girl is going blind and the other one is blind. And he's been training her for a while. So we do this for free because we just think it should be out there. Um, so as, as the time went on, I was trying, and if you talk to scientists and stuff, they're still trying to figure this out. Um, I started to remote view um, uh, just spontaneously, because when Rob and I were training, he was 50 miles away from me. And I, he one day said to me, um, I'm holding up a sheet of paper. And he said, come over to my house. I knew what his house looked like come over to my house and I'm walking across the room and tell me what color of paper I'm holding up to the window. And as I did that, I saw him walking across the room and I saw him holding the sheet of paper up to the window. And I said, uh, the paper looks land green, but Rob, I saw you walk across the room and he was recording. So the view that I got was the same view that was on the recording on his computer, which that one blows my mind. There's so much about consciousness I don't totally understand, but that was my view of him walking across the room. And since that time, um, I'm, I still practice on my own every day. Um, I can see without mask or anything. I just close my eyes. I can see like um, shapes, pictures. I practice to keep it open. Um, but I've also had experiences of remote viewing totally out of the blue, where I had a friend who went to Mexico and I didn't know he was there. And we were texting and all of a sudden out of the blue, I got this image of him, not, of, not of him right away. I got an image of a room and the room had white tablecloths on it and everything was sparkling i didn't understand that everything was sparkling then i got a vision of him sitting in a chair beside a door and then i got a vision of him holding a cigar it was his left hand and then i got a vision of someone else sitting across the table from him and then i kind of came back and i'm like and i'm texting him i'm going um <laughs> I don't know where you are, <laughs> but I started telling him what I saw and he texted me back and he said, I'm having a, my birthday party. I'm down in Mexico. I'm sitting in a room right now with tables and white tablecloths. He said, I'm sitting, and I said he was sitting by a window. He said, I'm actually sitting by a, a patio door. So window door is I'm sitting by he said I am smoking a cigar with my left hand oh and I also said to him I see a glass of red wine beside you and I said that doesn't seem right because I know you like scotch <laughs> he comes back and he says I'm drinking wine because it's my birthday and um and he said, yeah, I'm drinking red wine because it's my birthday. And I said, I see someone sitting across from you, a female. She seems oriental to me. And he said, yes, she's Chinese. And then I said, but I don't understand the sparklies. And he said, it's nighttime. There's glasses and there's a chandelier and a light and a, a chandelier and the light is sparkling off the chandelier onto all the glasses. So that whole thing absolutely blew my mind. And I came out of that and it was just like, it was spontaneous, absolutely spontaneous, just because I was texting him and we connected and boom, there it was. And that's what remote viewing happens with me. Um, I do practice with my girlfriend who's in Australia, Leone, and we will take cards and we'll put things on tables and, and say, okay, tell me what, what card and stuff and and that works whereas she's in australia and i'm here and, and we do that back and forth but we train i don't do the i don't do the controlled remote viewing because for some reason 
I was actually told by one of the trainers um, from Russia saying not for me, because of what I do, not to do the control remote viewing because I go to where the object is and I don't go by numbers. I just go there. So I, it's kind of like my seeing. I have to, I have to actually send myself to the object. So if I'm setting, when I set up a card, I send myself to that card. When I remote view, I, I go to the, where it is and actually experience what's there. So I've never really tried the control because, um, because I had the warning not to because of what the way I see. So as, as time went on, I learned with, from all my experiences and stuff that how this works and um, with everything that I've experienced, I have came to the conclusion and actually um, Deb's helped me with this too. Everything's in the quantum field, everything. And you just have to raise your vibration and you have to access it. You send yourself to where you want to access and you will find it. Um, but also there's a whole big debate right now about, is it the pineal gland? Like everybody says, activate the pineal gland, but I can activate the pineal gland and not, not see. So I, I myself isn't, I'm not totally, you know, decisive on that at all. I've just read a book and they're saying, they're saying um, people that do teach it and they say it's the thalamus and that um, it is the one that would accept the sight and that. So I'm, I'm on the, you know, I'm just not decisive on that at all. I do know that for this to work, you it's like a muscle. Kids can do it right away um, because they're, they say that people have, some people have a thick, um, um, line between the quantum field and yourself like there's a thick separation there some people it's really really thin so they can access it some people can access it right away like children children can they see beings they can remote view they can see with the blindfold right away adults once they get past the age of 12 then they have to be taught again because they haven't used that muscle, the thalamus, pineal gland, whatever it is, they haven't used it. And so they have to be retrained in how to use it. And they have to keep practicing and practicing in order, it's like an irregular muscle. You have to keep practicing to build that muscle up so that you can use it to, to actually do this thing, remote view. I call what I do, close up remote viewing, you know, like that's what I call it. Um, but it's, it's, um, you have to train and you have to actually get this muscle um, strong. Like I don't have to now, I can just sit and do it. Um, but if I quit, um, probably over time, I would lose it also. And I do know people that have trained, quit training and they lose it also. So I think it's the same thing with remote viewing. Once you learn how to do it, you have to keep active at it to keep that muscle strong in order, in order to get better for sure. So nice. We have that's that's a lot of, of good stuff. I'll give you a break for just a second. We have a few questions that okay. kind of tied your flow there. So I'm I'm gonna uh kind of put them in as I feel they fit in. Uh and then then we'll we can get back to the next next part. Um so one uh, question is, when you see, what does it look like in terms? Is it dream or is it like a full color movie sort of thing? It's like seeing. Or is it in between? Eyes. It's like seeing with your eyes. When, when, once, wow. when, you, when you first, yeah, it's like seeing with your eyes. Um, when you start seeing the room, it starts out in black and white. But as you train, it's it's like seeing with your eyes. Seriously. Yeah. Wow. They, so you touched on this a little bit. So you went to the quantum field and then, um, and this is phrased in a different way, but get your take on this. Okay. So do you think you're 
your consciousness is connecting uh, uh, to a vibration or, or getting to the target that way? Or are you going to an intermediate thing like an Akashic record? Some people, you know, say that's got everything in it, you know, so it's it's like a depository or it's a connection point. Like, how do you view it in, ter in that kind of a terminology? Um, my experiences, what I've had is anything, I mean, even when I remote view, it's like seeing with my actual eyes. When I went to Rob's place, it's like I, I saw him walk across the room. It's like I was there. When I saw the room the fir very first time, when I saw the desk and, and the lamp and everything, I saw it as if it, as it was there. There was no fuzziness. There was no nothing. I was seeing it. It was, it was like I was seeing with my eyes. And that's the experience that the blind people are having, that they're seeing. Um, Rob's friend, he just went to Germany on the plane, um, as he, on a train. But as he was leaving his training session, they said to him, he said, somebody get my coat. He's been blind most of his life. Somebody get my coat. And they said, no, you go get it. And at that moment, he saw his coat hanging there. And he walked over and got it. Like it was, like it was, like, like it was right there. And then when he got on the train, I'm not sure. He said his luggage was bright green or something. <laughs> and he was on the train. And he was trying to find it. And all of a sudden, boom, he saw his luggage sitting there. He's been blind. I think he's in his 70s now. He's been blind since he was 20. You can imagine. And he said wow. he, was, he was sitting, having lunch. And as he was having lunch, all of a sudden, he saw the face of his friend across the table from him. Can you imagine? Wow. Like, I, nice. I find it blows my mind. I find it like just untold. That's why I'm so fascinated. And that's why I'll never quit. I find it fascinating. Can you imagine having a blind person experience this that had been blind most of their life? He's seeing the table. He's seeing the table in front of him. He's seeing colors, pictures. He's see, as we're as he's being trained, he's seeing words, he's seeing letters as they're being held up, like real time. He's seeing them and he's been blind since he's 20. Can you can imagine the excitement there? Yeah. Yeah. So when you, that, the, uh, there's a kind of a follow on to the, so say, are all your experiences so far real time or have you had an experience that was in retrospect, you saw something that happened or beforehand, premonitionary, whatever that word is, it, it, you see it before it happens or is it all for you real time? Real time. For me, it's real time. Yeah. I know one and time, go ahead. And it is, is you, you said it's like, just like in the room, are, are they just standard colors or do you actually, because you're not limited by your, your physical apparatus, do you feel like you can access a broader spectrum or things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to? So far sense? for me, it's real time. It's real, real, that's a second while I grab this <laughs> real colors like this is what I used to train and I can tell you one day uh, during my practice years ago one day I was practicing getting really frustrated I saw nothing nothing and so I'm like but I wouldn't I don't give up <laughs> so I'm still practicing and I remember this distinctly all of a sudden I'm going like this and all of a sudden I saw my hand I saw the purple cup in real time I saw the ribs I saw the white I saw it in real time and I went, okay, I'm going to keep practicing because <laughs> that totally blew my mind. It's real time. Yeah. Nice. All right. Um, and then uh, just, it, it was way early on the C. A lot of us have entered into all of this from a, a CE5 sort of mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. Right. And you talked a little bit about that and it's, it, it it was just curiosity of of do you have a similar story on the CE five? It's not for this time necessarily, but do you also have an interesting story about how you got into CE five type stuff? Oh, I, or it just happened. Um, I have six years worth of unbelievable stories that I experienced just out of the blue, even with Sasquatch. Um. And I can prove it because I had a friend um, 
I had a friend with me with my Sasquatch experience. And um, the other experiences, um, I've been on a craft. Um, I've seen one of my most amazing ones. I've had, I actually had my life saved once um i was down with friends in um down in the states and i was very sick and i got sick from being um I, I was away with a friend and i picked up um a flu or whatever and so my friend said come anyway so i went with them and so i was with them and i was so sick and i decided to go into the bathroom and have a soak in the bathtub and try to soak this out you know, so I went in, I'm laying in the bathtub and, and I'm just, oh, I just felt so bad. And the next thing I know, someone yelled in my ear, hey, a loud yell into my ear. I came up like that. My, I was face down in the water. I have no idea who yelled at me, but they yelled at me very loud and brought me out of it. And I still say to this day, I would have. I would have drowned if that hadn't happened. Yeah. So I've had that. I've had one of the first experiences I had. <laughs> um, I was with a friend down in the States again, and we decided to go sky watching out in the desert. And so we drove out, the two of us, and we just sat um, out in the desert, and we decided to sit in this great big rock and meditate. And as I'm sitting there, and this is one of my first experiences, um, I'm there meditating, and all of a sudden I had this vision of this energy being, white robe, white hood, everything. And I'm like, and this friend of mine's hanging on to me. I can't, like we're holding hands while we were meditating. And this energy being reached over and touched me on the forehead. And from that moment on, I felt a huge surge of energy through me and so bad that I was shaking and my friend was hanging on to me. And then it was like it was standing there watching me and then it just faded out. And I had that energy with me for months after. It was so strong. Some days I could hardly walk. My legs would almost buckle under me. That's how strong this energy was. And it went on and on and on and on. And then after a few months, it slowly started to dissipate. What the reason for that was, I have no idea. But I'll never forget it, I'll tell you. And then I had another one. This one, I think I told you about this one at the retreat. I, um, I was just hiking and I had the feeling I needed to go off and just sit by this stream. And I did. And all of a sudden I had a vision of a craft over me. And I felt a being, I, 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 me I was meditating, but my head was down and I felt a hand go under me and lift me up to set me straight like that. And then I don't remember anything else. And then at the end of that, I got up and went walking again, but when I did, I felt the energy of everything. Like I felt the energy, like I didn't before they did that, but then I did. And I felt the energy off the trees. I felt at the water, everything. I felt, and I, it was absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. That sounds fantastic. We, we love the stories. All right, so, so I think we have to, we have to like, Stop that now, and we'll I have to have going. you back for more stories because we I love that. Six stuff. years of that, yeah, six years. Yeah, yeah we love that stuff. So, yeah. so, so it sounds like that kind of th that kind of happened around the same time to get you started into this the this um, other skill. Um, as, uh, as that well. was happening. That was happening. Um, before and during, mm. I um. I was proud. My mom was sick and I sat, I sat with her and she passed away and I heard her. She gave me a message when she passed. And, um, I'm, I don't know, like I, when she passed, I wasn't doing this, but it took us quite a, quite a long time to learn everything that we were trying to learn and, and, um, and doing the tra like, training, the muscle basically. Right. 
and um, yeah, um, but I was having all these experience meanwhile also. So yeah. oh, wow, fantastic! Yeah. All right, um, so I think what we would be nice for us as those are curious is to segue kind of into like just basic techniques. Like if you were going to teach someone, you know, like, like um, just walk us through a couple of the techniques that you use to start off people who are curious yeah. and um, if they want to practice kind of thing. Yeah. If I, every teacher we had taught differently, every one of them, um, to be perfectly honest, when I train somebody, I feel them out. I see how psychic they are. I'll see how stressed they are. Um, one thing is if um, um, you can't you can't be highly stressed, you can't um, have a lot of stuff on your mind because when you do this, it's your right brain or your right mind that's doing it. But your left brain controls everything, controls everything. So when you if you're thinking about what you have to do tomorrow or you're thinking about your next meal or you're thinking about, you know, um, your neighbor's sick or whatever. My job is to shut that down, calm that down and take you into a place where you're living in your right brain. And that's where all this comes from is your right brain gives it to you. I don't know if you ever saw the, there's a, there's a video out there of this woman who had a stroke um, quite a few years. It was on TED Talk, and we found it. And this woman had a stroke, but it affected her left brain. So she lived in her right brain. That was fascinating. And that kind of explained um, how this works for us. So when I, when I train people, um, I had one woman, she was blind for four years. Um, we became good um, connection too. Like, um, I'm, I, I try to work for a connection when I'm training people and she, we became really good friends out of the blue. We had so much common. And um, so we had two or three sessions just talking. And then I started training her and out of the blue, she started describing my face. Yeah. She started, she says, Oh, you've got blondish brunette hair. And she, oh, this was one on video. I think I, I saw. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's she, on your YouTube. Yeah. She, was a, she was from South Africa. Like she was living South Africa. I was training her like one in the morning, but she just started. Like I started with color. She was fascinating. She said to me, I told the color up and I say, what color do you see? And she tell me, and then I'd say, how did you see that? And she said, I saw flowers on a tree. I saw pink flowers on a tree and I was holding a pink card. So then I held up another color and she gave it to me. And I said, how did you see that? And she says, I heard it. And I have had that before too, where a voice will tell you what color it is. But then all of a sudden she stopped and just started describing my hair, my hair, my face, everything. The next session, she described my, 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 uh, she says, you have a door beside you. And I said, yes, I do. I can, she'd been blind for four years and she just, that was two sessions with her too. Yeah. It was, it was most incredible. But like I say, mostly it's a calm. Um, I always say meditate, but the meditation is not to connect or anything. It's just to calm that down and try to get the left brain to calm down and then wear the mask, um, wear the mask with your eyes open because your neural your brain is saying you can only see with your eyes open so start that way and then um and then just comment and then just start trying to put colors and just see if the, the colors come through like i say some kids can do it immediately some people can do it immediately so and you can you walk us through you held up a, a few things can you just walk walk us through a couple of your tools you mentioned the the shapes and how that ties to letters and things, but yeah. do you have, like you have your go-to tools that you use? Well, I usually start out in colors. You usually start out in colors. Um, that's usually the main one. And then we move on to um, letters. Um, actually the shapes, these ones. And like I said, they are like, there's the triangles, circles and that. You start with, you use them also. And I know with Mark, he likes challenges. So I would, 
I started doing that. And then his, I always say his mind got bored. So I brought out playing cards and he was, by the end of the session, he goes, yes, I'm going to Vegas because he was getting every playing card that I put up. Every one. Yeah. And I actually stopped halfway through and I went, you know what? I, we have to prove that you're not reading my mind. So I quit looking at them. I shuffle and then I put a card up and I say, tell me what it is. And he was even getting it then. Cause I really thought at one point he was reading my mind cause he got everything. Yeah. And that video is on my site too. Yeah. But it, it depends on the person. He loves challenges. When I'm training him, I have to think of different, I put two or three things up with him and say, you know, um, what are you seeing here? Because he, he's the type of person who likes huge challenges. So if you don't challenge him, his brain gets bored. So it, it like I say, so that's the personal part coming in. As that's the personal the person, part right? coming in. So you got to find connect points. Yeah, yeah. So Do you, you find... have to feel out. You have to suss out what kind of person it is. And like I say, some people open right away. Some people don't. So you have to work with that. Yeah. Do you do you find that uh, it works best with pairs, or is is it also effective in groups with more than? Um, um, it actually is better with groups because of the connection. Oh, this it's a group consciousness actually helps yes. bring stuff yes. out. Yes. And so for, how does for, that for, train, for training for now training. Um, for the, like, if you got a group together in a training and then you um, come home nine times out of 20, 10, it stops, but you have to keep training the muscle because you've opened it. You keep training it, yeah. But that could be a, a, a help to jumpstart. Yes. So you have like a, a leader who has the the thing, and then the group is focused on trying to, and they actually they, look, if you're, even if you have a group, it's nice to have two or three people working with people in the group. But you get the group group energy going for sure. I see. Okay. Pottery and stuff, and you know, I, yeah, there's there's a lot more to that, but um, yeah, that does help for sure. Yeah. So they. So clearly our group is, there are going to be some very motivated people that are online here, but also the ones that see this and they're going to want to jump in and do something. Yeah. So what would you recommend would be the best place to start? Is there a course that they can, they can jump in on or that should they, can they contact you for, for feedback well, advice? What's, I, what's the best I, way to do uh, it? Um, on my site, there's basic ideas of what to do. Um, okay. uh, they want to come on there. Um, there's basic ideas and Rob's is the same basic ideas and what to do. Um, there is, um, books, there is videos, of course. Um, we always tell people to go in and look at our videos because everything that we did is on there. And oh, so, that's nice to know. Yeah. yeah. Everything that we did is on there and you know, just go through that and try to, um, try to really take note of the things we do because everything that we did was um for a purpose really yeah so yeah nice um so we only have a few few minutes left so oh, if anyone else had any questions to put in the chat just as close mm -hmm. uh to close us out there was curiosity is do you have did you have anything you wanted to share about the sasquatch that's you know that's something that you you know a take home or anything <laughs> I've had um, a few. Um, my first one was incredible. And I was with two other people that saw it happen. So we were out and one fellow, he was psychic. Um, as we were walking through the field and we both received the message, they wanted us to leave because there was young there. And the young had never seen humans. Yeah. So we both heard that. I'm like, I just heard that. And he goes, yeah, I did too. So anyway, off we go and we find another spot and, and we were just walking around all of a sudden we were hearing bang, bang, like, like, thump, like three branches being hit and stuff. And we heard rocks coming down and like, and, and like we, you're with three people. Yeah. You, know, you can kind of laugh it off. I'll never forget this one where a huge rock goes thump right beside my car. And I looked and, and me and the other fellow, we looked at each other and started to laugh. Because <laughs> it was pitch, it was like midnight. We broke out laughing and we both immediately saw 
it's going to sound weird, but we both immediately saw a Sasquatch face with the big grin, with the biggest grin on his face. And we both continued laughing. And then we moved over to this one area. And I'm like, um, I, I smelled, um, I smelled like a flower, I smelled flowers or whatever. And I said that to my friend and I said, but all I feel, I feel love and humor. And when I said that, my friend says, they're saying they really like you. And I went, oh, okay. So then I moved back to my car and I'm standing there and I look down and I see these two arms around me like this, like coming down like from my shoulders down like this. And they were like an orangey brown, hairy arms. And I look down and I go to my friend, um, I'm seeing arms around me. And my friend turns around and looked at me and he goes, yeah, there's like an eight foot Sasquatch right behind you. And he's got his arms around you. And I went, <laughs> Okay. It's, it's, and, if and you're like, in love. You're, you're in love. Right. <laughs> yeah. But I, my second wasn't as friendly. So no. my second one was basically yelling at me to get off the property. I was in their territory and he was big and I saw him and I left. So. So I like to talk about my first one. So. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So they come in all flavors, I guess. They right. certainly do. They certainly yeah, do. Yeah. Nice. Um, and then, so back to the remote, you mentioned one of your, the things that was, a uh, an awakening to you was that emotion might be involved. Right. But then you didn't mention that you include that, that you, you segued to more about the distraction being a negative, but I wondered, is there a way that you found to, to enhance things with emotion and how does that work? Well, it's kind of like what you do to raise your vibration play music, be happy, you know, um, it's, it's a whole different, same thing. You raise your vibration and you open I up. see. Okay, cool. Do you have uh, ever heard of extended remote viewing is one of the questions we have. Is it similar to, it, I, I'm not sure what the, the definition is of yeah. extended, but have you heard that one? No, I haven't. All right. Heard. So we'll get into that. Uh, if, if then if there are no more questions in the chat, what I'd like to do is we'll end it with the recording and then we'll just open it up to an open discussion and people can get more details in a couple of minutes if they want. All right. I so, revealed a lot more than I normally do. So oh, yeah. oh, we appreciate it. You got the right crowd <laughs> for it. So I'm going to end right now. Hang on.